Good morning, everybody. What's going on? This is Jordan with Conca Trading and Investing getting ready here for our live stream. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really important one. It's the most important episode that we're putting out there to date. We're going to make sure that we have the clarity that we need to continue riding the bull of all the bulls and conquering the markets. And if you think it's easy, you learned yesterday, it takes that type of dedication. It takes that type of commitment. It takes that type of awareness. Peter, everyone in Conquering the Markets, good morning. Thank you for all that you do. The hive mind working together, it's been absolutely phenomenal. It's an honor and a pleasure to serve alongside all of you. This is Ted's chart. We're going to come back to this a little bit later. We're going to start over here with the price of Bitcoin currently trading at $41,960. Okay, we have a lot to talk about. What I'm going to try to do here is actually just just come out with what's important rather than try and spit fire and try to get caught up and go too fast. It's a lot to cover over here. If you're focusing on the comments today, you're probably better off laying back and paying attention to what's going to be shared here. It's that important. Moderators too, if you want to just listen today, that's all good. We'll let the comments flow. Don't worry about it. We got to make sure that we continue to be on point here and continue to get the awareness we need to continue to make sure we are positioned correctly. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. What happened yesterday was not normal. What People are looking at this chart and they're like, yeah, Bitcoin down 54%. That's just Bitcoin being Bitcoin. That's not true. That's not true at all. But Jordan, over here, Bitcoin was down 70% in six weeks, right? It was down 44% in about you know 10 days and then 70% in six weeks. By the way, because someone else will tell me that every single what or the two previous cycles at least has seen a 70% correction in six weeks. That's a really good situational awareness point to know that yes, we have entered the bear market and yes, we are expecting an 80, 85% correction. But Jordan, the institutions are here. You know, yeah, 54% correction. The institutions are over here. What about this one? This 53% correction. This was capitulation in the bear market. This happened again in the previous cycle as well. This is how the bear market ends with capitulation. Nasty. Do you remember for how long the $6,000 price level held? Held. People thought that was going to be the low, right? And then it held and then it fell. And then people were trying to talk you out of your Bitcoin, telling you it's going down to $1,000, $1,500. Right. What about this one? 63 percent. This is the one that most closely resembles this 54 percent Jordan that we saw yesterday. Why? Because it was an anomaly. This was the dollar liquidity crisis. This is where everything correlated down to one. And you saw Bitcoin with that 63 percent drawdown in days. It's the most close. It's the event that cl most closely resembles what happened over here. Now, going back to the first cycle when Bitcoin was, when I say first cycle, I'm referring to the 2012 cycle, right? The 2012 cycle, you saw Bitcoin after the, the first double wave, after a blow off top mid cycle, you saw a massive correction, roughly 70%. That's the only other time you saw Bitcoin in a bull market put down a drawdown. Let's call it over 40%. Okay, what happened yesterday is not normal, right? Yes, at the end of the day, it is Bitcoin being Bitcoin, but that should not have occurred in the bull market. What happened? That's what we're going to take a look at. A lot of people, Giles this morning, my, my brother Giles telling me, yeah, you know, listen, that it reminds me of what happened back in March. With, with 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 the dollar liquidity crisis event. And then he said, well, everyone now seems to be on top of that. Everyone's talking about that as price was covering. That's all well and good. Just keep that in your head over here. What else is happening is this video, which thank you every everyone who's working together, you know, most especially in the Discord, right? You know, sending messages on Twitter, making sure that we're all aware of what's going on in the market so we can continue to work together. I thank you. Yes, of course, it's not possible for me to respond to every message. It's not even, It's of course, that's not possible. But I do read and take to heart everything shared with me. A lot of people spreading out this information yesterday, talking about, look, this guy over here, yeah, he was definitely, and he did, 
This was when Bitcoin was trading about $50,000 back on the 25th of April. This video by Uncomplication was put out and he talked about, hey, listen, price is very closely resembling this Wyckoff distribution pattern. We have to pay attention at this point. He was well aware of the pattern developing. People are asking, Jordan, how come you weren't aware of it? Well, well, two weeks ago on the channel during the live stream, I was aware of it because of all of you. And I looked at it and I said, well, listen, I don't think that that's what's taking place. And a little that's I'll talk about that in a moment and why. OK, but more importantly, that he was aware of it. He was bringing it out there, letting every know what is everyone know what is happening. Right. He's saying we should have known earlier, but I know now. And that's and if you were following this pattern, you got it right in the fact that it played out. Right. Actually, we, we came almost down to to exactly where the where the profit target was for this without question for sure. Now, listen, it gets a little complicated. This is what's really important for us to work through. Right. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go slow. We're going to go slow. You know, listen, um, if you think, first of all, that this was Wyckoff distribution event. What you're looking to happen next is some sideways price movement. You're looking for sideways price movement as then those, inst when I say institutions, whatever powers that be that were manipulating the market, quote unquote institutions, if it were the institutions, right? In, in this video, he's very clear. Look, we all wanted the institutions. The institutions are here now and now they're playing games and they're coming to take your Bitcoin, okay? That's that's the premise here. I watched the whole video and then I also watched the second video part two. If you go ahead and you find it, you'll see the part one and part two, right? Part two talks about since they were manipulating the price of Bitcoin in order to get your Bitcoin, what happens next is that we're going to see the second phase of Wyckoff play out, the, the, the accumulation pattern. And this is how they go ahead and this is how they accumulate for the next big leg up. So if you if you believe you can't believe both, if you believe that this happened and this was institutions coming for your money, coming for your Bitcoin and manipulating price, then you also believe at this particular time that price, as as someone pointed out, Novakratz points, you know, said, hey, listen, price, I expect to go sideways now, you know, and it could happen. We have to what happened yesterday was not normal. We have to be prepared for everything. I have no crystal ball. I am. Uh, do we have more clarity than we did yesterday? We'll talk about that in a moment, right? But right now you have to be prepared for everything. Could you, should you be prepared for price over here to kind of retest, come back down lower, m maybe take out a lower low or not, but, but go sideways over here as we go through a period of accumulation. If you believe this is Wyckoff, if you believe that institutions are manipulating Bitcoin to get your Bitcoin, well, that's your base case. That's your premise, right? And then you and then you have the map. And we can refer back to this if this is what would occur. If we see price right now bouncing up over here to AR, by the way, you see this PS over here and AR? Look on, look on the price. Let's come down to an eight-hour chart so we get a little clarity. What, you know, what would you call it right around this area, right over here where we're trading right now? Right, right around where we're trading right now. If price now, you know, and it could go a little higher, we could go, we could go up to even to forty-five thousand or even higher, forty-six thousand. We're going to be generous here. We're going to make sure that we take the time to get it right. We're going to make sure that we get the time to get it right. So, is it possible that we come into this plate? This is a. This looks like a V, by the way, in the beginning. This is a sharp bounce, right? And then all of a sudden we come back down and then we make that lower low, right? Perhaps coming in somewhere around 28,000, perhaps 27, 26. We don't know, but we'll be watching. And if that's occurring, by the way, then we could say, all right, pretty quickly, this looks like actually that we are seeing the accumulation phase take place. And now we have some type of roadmap to lean into, to lean off of, to help us navigate through the next phase. Very important over here. So we have to consider that, right? You have other people over there. Nick, this is Nicholas Merton from Datadash, right? You, listen, you have to listen to what he says. Whether or not you agree with it or not, just listen to what Nicholas is contributing. He's, in his opinion, he's saying that yesterday's dip was not caused by Elon. It was not caused by China. China. 
or any other boogeyman the headlines are telling you about. Today's dip was caused, yesterday's dip was caused by an excess leverage trading, immense greed, and weakening momentum, weakening momentum in the uptrend of crypto. Okay, listen, right or wrong, this part is definitely true. What we saw yesterday with a 54% drawdown, definitely not right. Was there manipulation involved in it, right? Everyone is aware of this as well, what happened yesterday, sh uh, shared on 4chan, right? If this is correct, was there some degree of manipulation that helped this excess of leverage go ahead and then we saw yesterday's event take place? Listen, I cannot rule that out. Now, whether or not the timeline unfolded or this was photoshopped, I have I have no idea. You have to you have to pay attention to it. It could be true. There could be factors there that definitely came into play. How long that manipulation lasts or whatnot, I don't know. Or is Nicholas completely right that that had nothing to do with it and it was all excess leverage? Either way, excess leverage definitely played a role in that. You have to consider everything and you have to be very open. Okay, by the way, let me skip over to Alan AU. I'm going to retweet this right now just so that you're able to find it off my Twitter feed. If you're not following Alan, Alan Ow, you have to, right? I call him Alan AU uh, because he's gold. No question about it. He well, Listen to what he says, right? Institutions have a lot up their sleeves. Absolutely. These guys are pros. And since their veil has been unmasked, they'll use something else up their sleeves. Wow. Could you imagine the clarity Allen is bringing? The massive drawdown will take time to repair. The fractals of, of 2013 and 2017 bull markets, bull phases are both in play. Absolutely. How they're going to play out, we're going to soon find out. We're going to make sure that we do that together and we're on point and we follow what's going on. It may be clear around the end of June. That's exactly what I told before, before yesterday's event. Be prior to yesterday's anomaly, right? The only other time we've seen any type of similar price action was during the crisis that unfolded over several days. This unfolded in one. It was different, but similar, right? He says by the end of June, middle, we should have a lot more clarity. That's exactly what I told Benjamin when we got, when we were speaking together, working it out, making sure that we're able to see clearly so we could help everyone that we're in contact see clearly and make sure they're positioned to take advantage of the bull of all bulls over here, profiting from Bitcoin and what's taking place in the markets. And then Alan goes over, he says, could Bitcoin's price go lower from here? If it behaves like the 2017 cycle, the dump is over and price will begin its V-shaped rebound, 100%. It happens to still be my base case, but you could see very clearly I'm open for everything and I'm going to make sure that I navigate it as best as I can. Okay, if, follow, if it follows the 2013, listen to this, if it follows the 2013 bull phase, Bitcoin will have a, low, a, a lower low next month, but rebound to close out with a monthly green candle. Alan bringing absolute situational awareness and clarities for us to follow. All right, what's next? People are wondering, I just want to clear this up briefly. People are wonder, wondering, right? How is it possible that I missed the Wyckoff distribution? Or not that I missed it because you all had brought it to my attention. We covered it two weeks ago here on this channel. How, how, did, I, how did I not get it right? Well, a couple of things. Obviously, I was leaning into the similarity of this pattern over here that occurred in the 2017 bull market phase. It occurred at the exact same time. You look, this is that same pattern occurring over here, right? And we came into the V and up. That's that's what I was focused on. That's what I was looking on. If you listen, there, it, you have to call it what it is. We saw a 54% drawdown yesterday. It was an anomaly. The only other time something like that happened was during the crisis, right? This, they say in sailing, they say they they say in sailing, if you're off by one degree, you could be off by a massive amount of nautical miles. You know, if you're off by one degree, you're off. There's no question about it. But we, have, we just have to make sure that we get our bearings correct, we line it back up, and we make sure that we continue to see it clearly. I definitely was confused about what happened over here. Whether or not this was actually Wyckoff distribution, we're going to find out in the, in, the, in the days and in the weeks ahead. We're aware of what could happen, and if it is, we're going to play it out correctly. 
I, at this point, I still don't know. I still don't know, but I give credit to everyone who saw it. There was a big difference between the two. This is something that won't happen again to, to, to me, you, or anyone else. If you're familiar with the pattern and if you haven't watched this video, he does a fantastic job walking everyone through it with the notes from StockCharts.com and, and Wyckoff's own notes. It's, it's beautiful. It's a learning experience. Take the time to educate yourself if you haven't already. Most of you have. There's no question about that. By the way, if you're watching this on the on the on the replay, big shout out to you. Lots of love. Love your comments in the videos. But go ahead and please support the channel and smash that like button. As well as anyone that's here today, could you go ahead and get us going over here as we continue working through over here? You could see the difference. I'm going to show you the difference right now because it's important between what happened in two, in 2021 over here and the difference what happened in 2017. Because if I was more, if I had been more astute, more aware, I might have caught it. I might have caught it. You could see over here on point number three. That's the difference. Point number three in this in 2021, it makes a higher high than point number two. Do you see that over there? And if you could see over there, that's the that's the Utah test. Okay, that gave a lot of clarity. I missed that. I don't want to miss it again. I'm aware of it now. That's who we are, and that's what we do. All right, that's why I wanted to bring that chart up to you and point it out to you. Uh, if you're not following John K on on Twitter, you got to do it. I've been sharing his his tweets. I've been sharing his charts. He's he's going ahead and he's focused in on exactly what conquering the markets is focused in on, illustrating it beautifully with his charts over here, and he's pointing out right here the accuracy be between the 2017 bull run, the 2016 four-year cycle and the current one over here to the day now are we going to see something like this happen next are we actually we just looked at what could possibly happen next if this was a Wyckoff which it looks like for sure and then we have to look at what could happen next if that's the case and be prepared for it but we also need to consider if that was an anomaly yesterday if, we, if the events that unfolded yesterday were actually markets being manipulated, I don't think by institutions. I kind of, I kind of more, I'm more to apt to believe the whole conspiracy 4chan thing, that that some people conspired together to go ahead and try to force a liquidation on someone. Who it was, or how that unfolded, or who's involved, I have no idea. But Nicholas Merton is right when he says. The, the core reason for that was excess leverage. And that excess leverage was wiped away yesterday. All right. Let's keep going. Back over. Could this play out next? Right? Could we be watching the V all of a sudden take place? And are we going to... Alan said, you know, I think he put out... The, the date he put out was the 21st of June. Where, you know, roughly five, six weeks from now, we should have a very clear awareness price trading up above $70,000, that that was an anomaly, that we are tracking the, the cycle, that the four-year cycle, almost exactly as we've been, and that will continue to be our base case. Right now, we have a little bit more clarity than yesterday. Do you remember, by the way, and just, just let me talk everyone through, it was last Friday. I know it was last Friday because my wife said to me, what do you mean you're unsure? What do you mean you have no idea? On that video was the first time since we've been on that channel that I said, listen, something is not right. And that was after, by the way, I thought, and I was wrong. I thought this was the V. By the way, Ian had gone ahead. I shared that on this Friday. I shared to you the video that Ian shared, uh, the chart that Ian shared with me, taking the Bitcoin halving tracker and marking up the peaks and the valleys and showing that this was not the V and this was the V coming up. I, I was wrong. I was off by that one degree. And when you're trying to get the accuracy that we have here, listen, I could be the type of guy that's like, listen, Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. It'll be there in five years, you know, I could and, and be right. But that's not what we're trying to achieve and accomplish here. We are looking for precision. Okay. Either which way, at this point over here, when price started trading down off of Elon's tweet, it was right over here. I said, something is wrong. Something is not right. You have, someone just jumped into the lake, did a giant cannonball, kicked up all the mud. You have to wait for the dust to settle. If I am telling you that I am unsure of what's going on and that I am neutral, that did not mean that I exited my core Bitcoin position. For everyone who's just joining us, my stop loss is zero. There's no question at that when it comes to spot Bitcoin. 
okay? Now, the next thing I did was put out this line over here, this line of repair. And I said, listen, until we break above that, do not enter the market. Do not enter the, a lot of people entered over here. They wanted to, to you know, they had the FOMO of missing out on the upside. And that happened here again. A lot of people entering here too soon, too quick before the break because they had that FOMO of missing out on the upside, right? This morning is the first time we got break the upside. That's the first repair. Now, I put out this over here on Twitter yesterday. I showed you this line. I showed it in Discord. And I said, here's what I see. There's no rush. There's no rush. There's no need to jump in too soon. What just happened yesterday was very unusual. We could see a further move to the downside. We looked at it already in the beginning of the session, right? Could you feel a little bit better after you had the breakout retest and the resumption up? Yes, right? Breaking above here right now, do you feel a little bit better? Yes, with the caveat that I'm very clear, watch what happens over here. What We're coming into that area of what could possibly be what's noted as the first AR, right? We could be rejected over here. We could still come down and take out yesterday's low. It's a possibility you have to be prepared for right now as what we're seeing is highly unusual. We just saw a 53, 54% drawdown in the bull market phase. The only other time we've seen any type of anomaly, right? Has been, again, that's not, that's not the start of a bear market. It's not in a bear market. It's not capitulation. The only other outlier, by the way, is the 70% drawdown in the 2013, the first peak of the double wave. Bitcoin was a much more immature market. We're going to look at some of Raul's chart in a minute, and I'm going to show you with clarity what I'm talking about, because the same thing has occurred on Ethereum as it's being launched and is a new asset. All right, let's keep back. This is where I'm going to be focusing on over here, by the way. This is Ted's work over here. Ted, big shout out to you, you know, and the team. You know, you guys are absolutely phenomenal. This is lining up the, th the first cycle over here, right? This is that double wave. This is that first wave that I was just talking about to you. And then you see this massive 70% drawdown. It occurred right here really quick. 70% drawdown off of that massive blow off top mid cycle. Okay. That's the only other outlier we're talking about. In dark blue over here, we're looking at the 2016 uh, uh, Bitcoin cycle, four year cycle right over here exactly on time when you line them up from the having this chart right now is lining up price from each of their having events the having event is the most important event in the four-year cycle and you could see to the day over here we've had the shakeout this is the shakeout occurring right over here if if the four-year cycle continues to to play out if we're entering a period of sideways sideways price action and distribution right whether or not the four-year model at this point is still relevant, we will talk about. That That will have to do by by the, by the August, September, whether or not we go into a blow-off top, okay? It, we cannot say yes, but we're not talking about, listen, it's going to be years before I know if I'm right or wrong. We're talking months, okay? We'll, we'll talk about it. We're open to everything. We just want to get it right. Here we go. Now, what I believe, and we're working it out together as a team, we have the new over here. We have the new, one second. We have the new Bitcoin cycle modeling, right? All of us working together to make sure that we get it right. Led by Ted, led by Ian. Phenomenal work over there. Ian this morning with me sharing the work that he's doing. He's looking right now at using a combination of the happening and then using a, a combination of when price makes a new all-time high. We don't know which is the best model to go off of and which is correct. Ian, I will be looking at this after the live stream today, making sure that I'm up to date with exactly what you're presenting as well as all your posts this morning or overnight in Bitcoin cycle modeling, right? And then I'm going to I'm gonna touch base with the HODL group, give them a big shout out because those guys are like on a, on a raft in the middle of the pool, enjoying a nice cocktail with their sunglasses on, loving life, right? And then we're going to offer some support, you know, Ethereum outperform it again right now. We'll talk about that in one second. I'll come back to all that. I want to focus on this right now. What I happen to believe, team, the best thing going forward for us all to do is go, yeah, of course, really, Matt, I'm going to have to check that out over there. He continues to light it up with absolutely phenomenal content, as well as Brandon, the 120-day SMA, I believe it is. I want to know more about it. I want to know how Brandon 
when he saw Bitcoin under pressure really quick to defend himself, flipped into alts, knowing what the alt, knowing that Bitcoin comes down first, alts peak right after, and then protecting himself, getting on the sidelines. What's going on over here at Conquering the Markets is absolutely beautiful. And it's each and every one of you. All right. What I believe going forward for us is going to be the best place to look is going to be starting at the halvening, lining up each cycle with the, using the halvening as the factor to line up the charts. Then when the new all-time high is made, I do believe at that point, we switch to the prior all-time high break and line, line it up like that. I believe that's going to be the best way to continue over here, lining everything up and making sure that we're in line with everything. You could see how much more accurate things get. And then I do believe, right, after, not before, but after, because you can see over here, using the prior all-time high, this is where I got it wrong. This is exactly where I got it wrong and why, right? You see the, you see the 2017 bull market dip, the 2013 uh, bull market dip, and then as price dipped down, I thought that was the dip down. Now, Ian, definitely that chart shared on Friday with that accuracy showed how that was not correct. But that's what I thought it was and why. I do believe after that dip is put in that the for us to get to the end of the bull market over here, the best thing is going to be to do then at that point move over to scaling everything up before the dip before the parabolic, right? This is when I'm calling out to you, hey, listen, this is when I believe we're seeing the beginning of the parabolic move. Now, I'm not calling that today. You know, I just called it a couple of weeks ago and I was wrong. And then we saw some price action that was not normal yesterday. So I'm not going to be like, well, this is it. Well, obviously that's my base case, but I don't know. And I'm watching out for this very closely. And I'm making sure that we proceed with caution. There's no rush. We want to get it right. There's no rush to get out there and start making moves before you know exactly what's happening. All right. Now, I do believe that once, the, that, once that dip is in, that mid-cycle shakeout is in, at that point, lining them up from that point together helps us get to the top of the bull market, the peak, the best, right? As, as the cycle progresses, we keep lining it up from these markers, right? Now, will we line it up again as we get over here? Because it's 35 days, by the way, from this last, this last shakeout over here, this last correction over here until the bull market peak, you know? Will we line it? I don't know yet. I'm sorry. They are lined up perfectly. They're lined up perfectly right here, right now, you know, but, and everyone who's, who's watching right now, pay attention. We've been focused on September the 21st as the cycle peak. And that's still out there as a situational awareness point. I don't know if that's correct. By the way, if you're watching price action, right? If we're now looking, lining things up from the, from the mid cycle dip and trying to see approximately 150 days, that's where past cycles have peaked. That changes our date right now somewhere about a month later, right? Towards 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 the 20, 21st of October, you know, in that area over there. We're going to make sure that we continue to navigate this, not trying to, you know, put something out there and then just like get it right, but make sure we pay attention to what the market is showing us and make sure that we get it right. That is what we do and who we are. Now, this does change our perception of when the cycle could be peaking. A lot of people, by the way, as we get towards mid-September and we have that last pullback before the last 35-day vertical move up, they might be exiting over here. You know, Bitcoin might be trading around $100,000. It might be trading around $150,000. And a lot of people might be exiting over here. You know, and if we did not have and continue to put out the work that we do, working together to get it right, we might also have exited over there. But having this type of work, working together and making sure that we get it right, is we're gonna help us make sure that we stay in the market, getting out at the right time, okay? It's, an, it's the markets are ever uh, evolving, and we have to make sure that we stay in the flow and make sure that we get it right. Very important stuff to talk about. I want to show you Raul's charts for a second. Let me come over to here. Yesterday, Raul tweeted out to everyone and it was very important. And he's just making a, you know, he said, look, this might be useful to you. 
This is Bitcoin now in white versus what happened in 2013. Okay, why it might be very important to you is because what I think what Raul is pointing out, the volatility in this current in this current 2021 bull run has been increasing to the upside and now to the downside. You saw that occur in the 2012 cycle in the 2013 bull run. You saw volatility increased greatly to the upside and then greatly to the downside. Right. And he's lining that up so that you could see that occurring now then and then someone asked well what about 2017 but you could see actually that this cycle is actually mirroring more closely 2017 this this is the 2017 bull run that we're looking at right in the 2016 four-year cycle and you could see that price is more closely mirroring this one it's an average of the two so far to date you could see that, yes, we are having increased volatility to the upside and now to the downside. But at the same time, it's more closely tracking what occurred in 2017 during the bull market phase. Very important stuff over there. Someone asked him to pull up a chart of Ethereum. Here it is right now. What's interesting about Ethereum is that it's more closely. Ian is very on point with this. As it's becoming a more mature market, it's more closely resembling, by the way, you could see the double peak that occurred, the double peak that occurred in the 2016 uh, Ethereum cycle. It's more closely resembling what has happened in uh, Bitcoin's 2016 cycle in the 2017 bull run of Bitcoin. If you want to know what's going on with Ethereum, pay close attention to what happened to Bitcoin in 2017. That's the model that most closely resembles. And we're going to continue working together. This is, by the way, a look at both right where we are today. When I say where we are today, I'm talking about in the 2017 bull run over here and in the current 2021 bull run. And you could see the similarities of the two. You could see that. Hold on. Let me get it. You could see the similar similarities of the two. Are we getting ready, perhaps, to see price shoot up? I don't know. It's something we're looking at, something we're watching. You saw yesterday, by the way, when we talk about possible or probable market manipulation, is it coming from the institutions or is it coming from big players, perhaps in Asia or wherever they might be? You have the amount of inflows William brought out to us right before the dump. The, it was record inflows into Binance, record inflows by almost a 2x into Binance. And then yesterday you saw all time transfers out. Right in, dirty work done, dirty work done, and then right out. Could you? Does it smell like manipulation? Yes. I cannot. When Nicholas says it, it wasn't manipulation. I, listen, there's evidence on chain of massive manipulation, right? What when he talks about excess leverage? Yes, that's why they were able to manipulate the market because of the excess leverage. All right. All right, everyone, let's take a breath over here. A couple of things to talk about. We have Stefan Levera. By the way, his podcast is absolute fire, right? If you want to get technical about Bitcoin, understanding, uh, you know, Bitcoin as sound money, Austrian economics, listen to the Stefan Levera podcast. It is pretty elevated. It took me probably, you know, let me say a couple of years to be able to be like to understand what was being said over there. He says there's no path to get to 10 million Bitcoin. Look where his look at his time preference. By the way, Stefan is aware of the four-year cycle. Stefan is not trying to trade in and out of it. He just continues to hodl. He continues to dollar cost average. Look at this guy's time preference. I hope we all get here one day. I'm not Obviously, I'm not here. This is not my time preference. He's looking at 10 million. He's not looking at a million dollar Bitcoin next cycle. He's got his eyes on $10 million Bitcoin, right? You're not going to get there without volatility. I talk about that often as well. Right. It takes time for new entrants to develop a strong hand. Often it takes going through a full cycle. People know that meme when you're looking at the Bitcoin bull market and people think like it's just all rosy and easy. And for you, you just got lucky. And then a Bitcoin sees it with like all these enormous obstacles along the way during that bull market phase. This was a big one. This was a big one. Oh, this is a memorable event, what occurred yesterday. It was an anomaly. And each and every one of you who lived through it are going to be stronger for it. Even if you got even if you got wiped out yesterday. And, and I'm so sorry for that. 
What an experience. You are going to be stronger for it. By the way, it's very important to remember that some of your greatest failures will lead to your greatest successes. Mark Cuban, your greatest failures will lead to your greatest successes. And it's true. And it doesn't mean it's easy to go through. It's not at all. And that's why it leads to your greatest successes. All right, let's continue with that perspective we're looking at over here. There will be dips and crashes on the way up. Get used to it. Man up, woman up, tough up. There will be dips and crashes on the way. Get used to it, right? All right, what else over here? This is a good one. We got we got Crypto Cobain. When Bitcoin trades at 85,000, again, look, a Bitcoiner knows. When Bitcoin trades at 85,000 and they tell you that you just got lucky, remember this day and then smile and nod along. They will never understand. A lot of you have all become Bitcoiners now, right? And, and listen, when I say that, you know what I'm talking, you all know that I support crypto, truly, truly support crypto and root for the success of all projects. I love, I was part of the reason for my great empathy yesterday when we went live at the height of the bloodbath, because some of these, these alts were down, like, I mean, Bitcoin was crashing. These things were obliterated and I felt really bad. I felt really bad when I saw Ethereum mid live stream down 50%. I was like, is that real? You know, there's a lot of pain out there. There's a lot. If you don't have an empathetic heart, you know, what are you doing? Anyway, what else are we looking at here? Back to mission control, right? And this is team CTM over here. Look over here. You got, this is Ted, right? Right next to Ted, you got Ian focusing on the charts, figuring out where we to go. Here's Giles over here, overseeing the whole thing. Greg watching out for everyone, right? You got Gene over here talking to someone. I'm not sure who it is. And then where up front, we must have Heath. We got Heath and Brandon up front looking at it together, seeing what's going on in the main screen. This is the, this is the moderators. Look at the moderators over here huddled together, making sure everything stays on point and at mission. This is CTM all day long over there, and it's beautiful. And we got the Haven Tracker over here. Hold on one second. Let me bring it up over here. The Haven Tracker, right? This is using from, from the Haven event, obviously, and you could see the shakeout occurring right on time. Whether or not we come into a sharp VK V shape recovery or not, we will see we will see new. Oh, we didn't even point out Alan. Alan was in there as well. All of you were in there. All of you were in there. Whether or not we're gonna something different is gonna happen, and we're gonna come up a little bit, and then we're gonna test down lower, and then we're gonna say, Oh, this looks very for sure. What we're seeing now looks to be this occurring, and we're gonna say something's different something's wrong. We know then this was institutional manipulation and what they're trying to do is accumulate so they could run this thing up into the end. And then we're going to say whether or not that means that the four-year cycle is broken or they're going to be running it up into the end. We'll find out, but we'll be watching as we're seeing this cycle now go sideways for a while. And we're we'll making sure that we're able to have the focus we need to stay on point, to stay in, stay on position and even with, with the highest accuracy possible on that test over here, as everyone is shook for the spring, make sure that is where we know to position in and then take it out to the end. All right, everyone. I think we covered what we need to cover here today. All right, we'll do a training session on that. We will, I have, we will do a training session on that. As we get closer to the event, we will be working together. Right now, all of our focus and all of our intention is working through where we are right now. It's a very important time. This is a very important time. What just happened is unusual. It's not normal, right? We need to make sure that we have the awareness to make sure that we stay on the right side. Is this a retest right now happening right now? Or are we gonna come in back? Or is this a rejection? We don't know yet. Get off the two hours. The two hours to show you the accuracy, right? The two hours to show you. Follow what's going on here on the eight hour. Give it time. Follow what's going on in the daily. We have yet to make a higher high in the daily. We have yet to make a higher high in the daily. That's the safe entry for most. Be careful. Be, there's no rush. You could see this occur. You could right. This could be the V. This could be the spike up right into this area that we're trading around right now. And they could take it back down. We could see a large sell off. A lot of people leveraging up way too quick over here. A lot of people think that it's the, the water's fine getting in. They could get smacked down and hurt and we take out yesterday's low. Forget about it. It's a bloodbath again. Be aware. There's no rush, 
right? When I talk about Bitcoin is a lot safer of an investment today than it was back in 2016, forget prior 2016 when, I mean, people didn't, that was really a risky investment, right? That's why Bitcoiners have game played it out to a T. These, that's why they are Bitcoiners, right? Now, when it, when it, it's the same premise though, you know, this is right now trying to get, you know, into Bitcoin way too early. You know, is it safer getting into Bitcoin after it's proven itself? Absolutely. Has it proven it? We don't know what happens next. We don't know what happens next. We're looking at both cases and we're going to be watching to see. Now, my base case is, of course, and everyone should know or everyone knows, is that this is the point where we see a V-shaped recovery. As Alan Al pointed out, or sometime around, you know, mid to the end of, of June, we're trading back above $70,000. And I know, and I know that I'm back on point, right? But I don't know that yet. I don't know that. Is that a safer entry? Yep. Is it a safer entry right over here when, we, when we're looking for that last dip before the power? Yeah. We're we'll working out together. Listen, we didn't make it. Th this episode, by the way, it, it did deserve a thousand likes. We didn't make it to a thousand likes. If you're here and you witnessed it, please go ahead and smash that like button if you haven't already. Let's get going over here. Thank you all for the time. Thank you for this episode. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because it's very important only to share over here what was shared today. I hope by the end of the day, we get up to a thousand likes. I hope to the end of the day, we're able to receive that support that we deserve over here. All right, let's go ahead and play some honeymoon vocals over here, and then we're going to go out. Oh yeah, there's no question we're, we're putting head snack into this mix. Rustin, big, big, big ad over there. That's for sure. A couple of the questions before we do that though. If you're seeing the stream, if you're seeing the stream and it's blurry for you, go back down to the bottom right, find up the settings icon on new time, YouTube and change your, your resolution. You could go ahead and change that yourself. The Discord link, there's a link below in the description of the video that talks about the CTM training program. That includes not only what takes place on Discord, which is priceless. CTM is strong. The best in the game. And then also every single C uh, CTM training session that we've ever done, right? Past, present, and to come. And also my training course, my training course, showing you and instructing you on the CTM strategy and principles. All right, let's play some head snack over here. Let's definitely bring it out, you know? As it's a boom, boom, it's time to get it going over here. It deserves to be in this session. Let's get it.
markets, analyzing the charts, hitting projected targets within the margin. Find the flow, sip the matcha, and wait for the waves to come in with lobsters. The kind hearted Jordan Fosters, working smarter, not harder to move the markers. On his way to conquer, trading and investing, drinking the coffee while reflecting on the blessing. The markets are not crashing, the prices might be slashing, just to pretend they're in fashion. Leave a like button, comments, and smash it. Boom, boom, Jordan in the room, grab the bull by the horns, and we'll the moon. Flow from the plateau, make the play. Boom, boom, it's a taco day. And that's it. That's it. That's it. We came, we saw, we conquered. We're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to make sure that we work together. Stay on top of the bull of all bulls. Everyone, thank you for your time. Thank you for all you give. Thank you for all the messages yesterday. Thank you to each and every one of you. So, so, so incredible. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful day, and I'll talk to you soon.